Good day, Sir Chris and classmates. My name is Andrea Justin B. Fonday and my members are Leo Alfred Arevalo, Azel May Abelo, Micaela Maghinay, Jen Kalitis, and Jocelyn Tongol. And in this presentation, we are going to discuss about the technology and the evolution of human society. So let's first discuss about the four stages of evolution of human society. So sa evolution of human society is na hati siya into four stages. First is the hunters and gatherers, followed by the shifters and farmers. Third is the manufacturing and processing. And lastly is the future man-made world. So dun sa hunters and gatherers or the first stage is dun yung, uh, it is where the members solely solely depended on the resources available in nature. So katulad dun na pag-aralan natin ng first chapters or nung midterms, yun yung mga uh, parang homo sapiens, kumbaga sila yung mga hunter-gatherers na yung life nila is nakadepend lang sa surroundings. Yung life uh, yung life nila is nagahan sila ng animals, uh, balit dun sila nakabase for their living. And they used tools that they made themselves, such as woods, stones, bones, and the like. Then next stage is the shift shifters and farmers. So they learned how to tame animals and grow crops. They also mar this also marked the beginning of agricultural society. So ito naman yung part kung saan yung mga um yung mga tao noon is or yung mga Homo sapiens noon is from hunter gatherers nag evolve na sila. Uh, natuto na silang magtanim pati magpaamo ng mga animals kung saan natutunan nila na maggrow ng crops then yun na yung ginagamit nila ay ginaga, ginaga uh, yun na yung uh, food nila yung natutunan na nila yung world of agriculture then third stage naman is human manufacturing and processing this is where people learned about mining using metallic hand tools, and this is the stage where people discovered about gas, coal, oil, which they use in cooking in the manufacturing stage. And this opened the world to industrial industrialization. So dito naman yung part kung saan yung mga tao noon, isa tutunan na nila yung mining. Yung Dito na pumasok yung paggamit nila ng mga gas, coal, oil, kung saan nakakapag-manufacture na sila ng mga tools na ginagamit nila for hunting and for living na din. And that opened the world to industrial industrialization. Then the last stage of hum evolution of human society is a future man-made world where technologies, uh, pumasok na dito yung mga technologies and Eventually, technologies were used to produce synthetic food and for recycling resources to satisfy the increasing human needs resulting from the constantly increasing population. So, dito na pumasok yung pag uh, na-invent na unti-unti yung mga technologies. So, yung mga first technologies natin, kung naaalala niya sa first chapters natin, is yung mga steam engine, mga paper printing machine, and the like. Next slide, please. So let's move to the classification of society based on concept of waves. So atong classification of society based on concept of waves is ang proprietor nito is si Alvin Toffler. So let's first discuss who is Alvin Toffler. Alvin Toffler is was an American writer, futurologist and businessman. He is also known for his works discussing modern technologies including digital revolution and the communication revolution with emphasis on their effects on cultures worldwide. He also published several books including The Third Wave in 1980 in his book. The central pre premise is that human history while being complex and contradictory contradictory can be seen fit patterns that he calls three waves that describe the changes of the civilization. So dun din sa book niya na yun, which is entitled The Third Wave, is na-discuss niya din dun yung atong uh, classification of society nga based on concept of waves niya. So let's discuss about those three waves. Next slide, please. The first wave of society, uh, they are the ones who replaced the hunter and gatherer society after the agrarian revolution. Uh, Alvin Toffler also said that the people during this time only used small technologies which came into existence through trial and error. So yung samples ng technologies dito is yung mga paper, yung mga uh, 
unang ginagamit nila for communicating. Ganon. Then, next wave. Second wave, they are the ones from period of industrial revolution until the end of World War World War II. So, people use technology based on mass production, mass consumption, mass distribution, and weapons of many destruction combined with standardization, centralization, and synchronization. They basically had their foundations on Newton's physics, physics, biology, and chemistry. So, dito naman sa second wave of society, dito na pumapasok yung pagiging uh, industrialized ng society. So, dito na pumapasok yung mass production ng mga weapons and yung mga manufacturing din. Then, the last wave is called third wave. It is also considered as the post-industrialized society after the World War II. This is when people use modern technologies based on the advent of science, including computers, robot, robotics, and the like. This society was seemingly associated with scientific technology evolution. Next slide, please. So, para mas maintindihan natin yung concept ng three waves of evolution of human society, is compare natin siya dito sa picture na to. So, in this picture, etong nasa first row is yan yung uh, during the pre, uh, pre-industrial evolution, revolution, while etong nasa middle row naman is yung nasa industrial revolution, while yung last is yung post-industrial revolution. So, here's the first row. Maka-compare natin siya sa first wave kung saan yung mga tao, ayan, uh, societies pass down information and knowledge through oral traditions such as storytelling, writing on tablets and in books and scrolls existed, but for centuries they were only available to groups such as priests, scholars, physicians, and nobles. And the invention of the printing press in 1939 made books and pamphlets more widely available. So yun nga, few uh, short-scale or small-scale technologies lang yung nag exist sa kanila. And kasi nga, kakatapos pa lang nila sa agrarian evolution. Then followed by that is the second wave, which I can compare to the Industrial Revolution where there were advances in printing technology, which led to the development of the modern newspaper and increased mass production of books. So yun nga, kagaya na sinabi ko kanina sa second wave, dito na sa uh, second wave or sa industrialized revolution, nangyari yung mga mass production. The invention of railroads and automobiles facilitated greater distribution of books and newspapers. Kasi dito rin sa um, second wave is yung na-invent na rin yung mga steam engines which uh, which led to the invention of railroads and automobiles. Then, the creation of technologies such as the telephone also, telegraph, and radio allowed for instant instantaneous communication. Then for the third wave, which I which I can compare to the post-industrialized society, uh, dito na pumasok yung invention and increased availability of television, broth news, broadcast, and educational programming into people's homes. And the advent of personal computers and the internet allowed people to distribute information to a wider population instantaneously. Then smartphones, applications, and digitization of books and documents provided people with the ability to create, send, and access information at any time. So yun nga, uh, parang paraho sila dun sa concept of waves ng evolution of human society ni Alvin Toffler. Um, again, pre-industrialized is katulad ng first wave. Second wave is which I can compare to the industrialized revolution. Then the third wave is which I can compare to the post-industrialized revolution. Yun lang po sa part ko. Thank you. Next slide, please. So let's start na tayo sa classification of technology according to process. So energy technology, alam naman natin the word energy technology means energy resource na naka-refer to any material na ginagamit as a basis or source of energy. So yung energy resources ginagamit din to generate electricity and other forms of power for human use. So there are two kinds of energy resources. The first one is renewable energy resources and non-renewable energy resources. When we say renewable energy resources, ito yung um, natural sources. So these are the example, solar energy, wind energy, hydro energy, tidal energy, 
geothermal energy and biomass energy. Then yung non-renewable resources naman, ito yung mga um, include dito yung mga minerals, gems as well, oil, coal, natural gas. And for me lang ha, energy has both positive and negative impacts on societies. So nakaka-access siya ng um, so secure, um, safe, and clean energy is beneficial for humans but yung um pagiging energy extraction niya sa transportation uh, nakakapag negative consequences to sa health environment and economics of society pagdating naman po sa equip equipment technology alam naman natin na um, machinery and equipment to so nandito yung mga computers telecommunications equipment monitors keyboards printers servers drives and pagdating naman dito sa information technology um, to build communication networks for a company. So, uh, na-help nito yung employees na matroubleshoot yung problems nila with their computer or mobile devices to ensure the efficiency and security of business information. So, mas na-accessible nito yung pagiging mabilis or therefore, mas nagiging result din to ng uh, pagiging better connections between people and businesses. Also, yung several businesses niya. So, example dito is yung call center, telecommunications, companies, and other perspectives. So, yung life technology naman, uh, living technology is broadly defined as <clears throat> technology, uh, its usefulness. So, yung for... Yung purpose nito is ng technology is to meet a human need for a uh, need or solve a human problem. Yun lang. Thank you. Next is in material technology. Dito yun nabuo yung extraction, fabrication, and synthesis of different materials by the benefits of mankind. Dito na innovate yung mga bagay na gawa sa steel, plastics, brass, iron, copper, ceramics, polymers, and synthesis. According to the Department of Material Science and Engineering Norwegian Institute and Technology. Next is. So dito naman tayo sa technologies. Keep on changing and these changes are through skilling 2009. Dito na buo yung substitution and diffusion. So first, dito muna tayo sa substitution. So ito yung mga technology slides sa mga sinaunang panahon na pinabago o pinalitan ng mas magandang kagamitan upang maging mapadali ang paggamit based on BOR 1998. Halimbawa dito is yung stereotype recorder with a component of VHS o tinatawag na home system na ngayon pinalitan ng DVD o digital versatile disc. Isa pa dito ang halimbawa is yung partial replacement telephones by cellular phones which can be replaced by more sophisticated ones. Next is diffusion. So sa diffusion naman dito, lumalabas yung highest level technologies na kailangan i-adapt ng bawat isa. Kailangan muna nila pag-isipan kung paano gamitin. They need to interact by each other. Yun, may alam kung paano gamitin yung kahit anong mga napakabagong technologies based on BOR 1998. Next. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, when it comes to national development through science and technology. The role in uh, science and technology is to lead national development and to support socioeconomic needs. The pr priority areas that have been identified are in development, electronics, information, and communication technologies. The development of selected high technologies to lead the industrial structure adjustment. So when it comes to science and technology, Nag-hold ito ng progress sa development ng ating nation. At ang technology, nagbibigay siya ng uh, role ng wealth creation, improvement of the quality of life, real economic growth, and transformation in any society. Nakarol siya as uh, wealth, uh, makapag-create ng 
more uh more uh industrial mga gamit tsaka ma-accomplish ng uh, nation natin na mag-improve ang ating society. And then the product of science and technology has contributed to the development of countries such as America, Japan, China and to extend in some African countries. Through this application, scientific uh, knowledgeable professionals have been able to invent equipments and machines being used in industries and even in our homes. In addition to this, science and technology has helped in easing stress brought by the movement of goods and people from one place and another. Uh, kumbaga, mas mapapadali na yung uh, pagkilos natin dahil sa mga technology na nag-enhance sa ating nation. And then furthermore, sa science and technology has helped in the area of medicine, some natural herbs converted to drugs with the aid of modern uh, equipment. And these drugs are used in our hospitals, pharmacies, and over rural communities are transformed to urban settlements through science and technology. Uh, next is the National Development Indicators, uh, Abastillas 2003 World Development Indicators. World Development Indicators 2016 provides a compilation, compilation of relevant, high quality, and internationally comparable statistics about global development and the fight against poverty. It is intended to help policymakers, students, students, analysts, professors, and program managers, and citizens find use data related, related to all aspects of development. Ito ang compilation ng mga nag-uugnay sa mataas na quality o pwedeng mayahambing sa mga statistics, statistics tungkol sa global development natin. Um, maaari na itong matulungan yung poverty at kahirapan. Um, ito ay makakatulong din ito sa gumagawa ng mga uh, policy maker o yan nga, uh, patakaran, mga estudyante na pwedeng magamit nila in the future, mga analyst, mga professor na mga nagtuturo, and then mga prog programmers ng data na nag-uugnay sa lahat ng aspect ng program na, sa pag-unlad natin. And then, naka-include dito ang monitor progress toward ng World Bank Group's two goals of ending poverty and promoting shared prosperity. Eight teams are used to organize indicators, uh, which is the gross domestic product or the GDP, per capita income, income distribution, growth rate of gross national product or GNP, uh, percentage of employment, structure of labor force, and then human life expectancy. And then the last one is the percentage of urban population. And then it will be discuss of the next reporter. So let's talk about the following indicators are, are usually used to measure national development. What is gross domestic product? GDP or gross domestic product is the final value of the goods and services produced within the, good, the geographic boundaries of a country during a specified period of time, or normally a year. Oh, ang gross domestic ay tumutukoy sa market value ng lahat ng tapos sa mga produkto at serbisyo na ginawa sa loob ng hangganan ng isang bansa sa isang tiyak na panon. Ano nga ba ang market value? Ang market value ay ang actual na halaga ng transaction na tinatanggap ng mamimili sa merkado. Ang gross domestic din ay ang mga produktong... Okay. Gross domestic product. <laughs> is the final value of the goods and services produced within the geographic boundaries of a country during a specified period of time, or normally a year. Ang gross domestic product ay tumutukoy sa lahat ng sa market value ng lahat ng tapos sa mga produkto at serbisyo na ginawa sa loob ng isang bansa o sa isang tiyak na panahon. 
Ang market value ay ang actual na halaga ng transaction sa t- na tinatanggap ng mamimili sa merkado. Ang gross domestic product ay ang mga pir- produktong tinutukoy dito ay mga ginawa o nilikha sa loob ng isang bansa. Gayun din ang mga inilaan para sa mga nakatira at nasasakupan sa isang pamala- pamahalaan. Lahat ng mga salik ng produksyong ginamit upang mabuong mga produkto at serbisyo, maging ito ay ay pagmamayari ng produkto at serbisyo mag... Ay, sorry. <laughs> na mga dayuhan na matatagpuan sa loob ng bansa. Per capita income. is a measure of the amount of money earned per person in a nation or geographic region. O, o pinapalagay nakita ng bawat mamamayan kung ang kabuoang production at o pambansang kita ay pantay-pantay na hinati sa buong population. Per capita income is often used to measure a sector's average income and compare the wealth of different populations. It is also used to measure a country's standard of living. Or also known as income per person is the income of the people in an economic unit such as a city or a region or country in a specified year. Income distribution is the smoothness or equality with, with which income is dealt out among members of a society. So if everyone earns exactly the same amount of money, then the income distribution is perfectly equal. And if no one earns any money except for one person who earns all of the money, then the income distribution is perfectly unequal. So, growth rate of gross national product. Gross national product or the GNP is an estimate of the total value of the final the final products and services turned out in a given period by the means of productions owned by a country's residents. Ang gross national product ay isang kabuang pamilihang Halaga ng produkto at serbisyo na nagawa ng isang bansa o kita ng mga permanenteng residente na tinatanggap mula sa labas ng bansa sa loob ng isang taon. And that's all my part po. Thank you po. Next, percentage of employment. This is defined as the... Ikabila pa po. This is defined as the employment rate or the measure at which all the available labor resources are being utilized. It is computed as the ratio of the employed to the working age population. Above 70% is considered a high percentage value, while below 50% is somehow a low ratio. The ratio of employment to the population is usually higher for men than in women. The employment rate refers to the percentage of people who are working or looking for work at the current time. It is a measure that helps assess the level of participation in the labor force and, and the general condition of the labor market in a particular area or country. This percentage is usually obtained by dividing the number of employed persons by the total working age population and multiplying it by 100. Generally, the percentage of employment in the population is higher for men than for women. So next part. Next part. Next, ex- structure of labor force. It is the sub total of all the men and women who are able to work, be employed or unemployed. The age structure of the country basically determines the compositions of the labor force, demographic factors, influence, labor market dynamics, and skill availability. So it is 
So it is refers to the compositions and characteristics of workers based on various demographic factors such as age, gender, education level, profession, and employment status. It is provides ideas on the, on the distributions of the labor force among other sectors, industries, and professions within an economy. Understanding the structure of the labor force is important for economic and business policy makers to analyze trends, address labor market issues, and develop strategies for labor in workforce development and planning. Next, demographic. Demographic factors influence labor market dynamic and sustainability. Um, demographic factors such as population growth, population aging, and migration patterns affect the structure of the labor force. Human life expectancy. It is refers to the average number of years an individual or group of people would be expected to live, usually measured from birth and reflects improvements in healthcare living conditions and quality of life, impacts social, economic, and healthcare system. Human life expectancy refers to the average number of years a person is expected to live based on the prevailing mortality rate. It is a measure that provides information about the general health and status for the population. It is based on reports and the studies of the disease and their age at the, at the time of their death. Having a high human life expectancy is usually the average of health and living of a county or region. Next, percentage of urban population. It is represent the proportion of density of people living in urban areas, focuses on areas not primarily dependent on, on agriculture and government services, reflects the level of urbanization and immigration from rural to urban areas, influences infrastructure resources and socioeconomic within cities. It refers to the percentage of people or density of people living in urban areas that are not fully dependent on the agriculture and other government services. It shows the, uh, the degree of urbanization or migration of people from rural areas to urban areas. So urbanization can bring economic opportunities, better accesses to services and conveniences, but it also has challenges caused by overcrowding, lack of infrastructure, and an equal socioeconomic situation in cities. Yun lang po. Thank you. And that would be all for our presentation. Thank you so much for listening.